Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Pound and I'm back for with more about rocks in Chapter 1.3 of Purposeful Designs, Earth and Space Science. Last time we talked about igneous rock and this time in Section 1.3.2 we're going to talk about sedimentary rock. So our objectives today are to explain the process of compaction and cementation, describe how the three types of sedimentary rock are formed, and list and describe the major types of clastic sedimentary rock. So we said that rocks are classified by how they're formed. Igneous rocks are formed by magma and lava that have been melted inside the earth. Sedimentary rock is made of sediments, particles of minerals, rock fragments, shells, leaves, and the remains of once living things. So sedimentary rock is a rock formed from sediments that have been compacted and cemented together. Now I want you to notice in this picture that this river is carrying a lot of sediment. That's why it looks so muddy. And in this river, we have, or this picture, we have a river that has a lot of sediment in it, but we also have some sedimentary rocks in the picture as well. This is the most common rock visible on the Earth's surface. And at our school, being young earth creationists, we would say that that is proof that an entire flood, Noah's flood, covered the earth at one time. If most of the rock that we see is there, it was laid down by a massive flood. It's mostly horizontal, but sometimes it's folded and tilted. As we can see in this picture in the background, this has been tilted on its side and folded. That shows some great forces uh, have been compact, pressing that rock together and tilting it up. Okay, and this also, if we read about the account of the flood in the Bible, we see that it was a very violent and turbulent time as far as earth history the natural history of the earth. So these forces we would have also said were during that time period as well or shortly thereafter. Now the process that transforms rock layers of rock fragments as sedimentary rock is called lithification. And we're going to talk about the layers of the earth in the next chapter. The lithosphere it includes the crust and the rigid mantle, which are the rocky parts of the earth. So lithification is the formation of the rocks, the sedimentary rocks in particular. So how does sediment become sedimentary rock? Sediments become sedimentary rock through compaction, so the pressing together, and cementation. During compaction, sediments are pushed together inner pore spaces become smaller and some of the water is squeezed out. Basically it takes muddy substances and basically if you've ever seen mud and it compacts it so that it squeezes out that water. During cementation crystals interlock and connect the sediment grains so it dries out a lot like if you've ever seen concrete drying out. There are three types of sedimentary rock. The first type we call clastic rock. This is a sedimentary rock made of rock particles and fragments deposited by water, wind, or ice. This is probably the one that you're most familiar with. And there are many types of clastic rocks. The first is conglomerate. This is rounded gravel sized rock fragments cemented by mineral particles. And this picture here, I just took this weekend. I was at Rim Rock, very close to us uh, at the Kenzu Reservoir. And you can see in this, there are many pebbles cemented together. And I don't know if you can quite see the detail, but it's almost like sand particles in between these pebbles. Okay, and these pebbles really vary in size. Some of them were not quite the size of my fist, and others were smaller in this conglomerate rock. And the rock cities around our area, they are 
for the most part, conglomerate. I know the one at Allegheny, if you've ever read the Thunder Rocks, is also made of conglomerate rock. So very common bedrock around this area of New York State. Another type of sedimentary rock is breccia. This is sharp cornered angular fragment cemented by carbonate, silica, or silt. Now you can see compared to, if you trace around some of these fragments, compared to the conglomerate we saw, which was very rounded, which showed that it had been in water and tumbled around a lot, this is much sharper. Then there's sandstone, which you're also probably quite uh, familiar with. This is rounded sand-sized grains. It's very porous. I have this picture from Bryce Canyon. You can see the sandstone, and then you can see that it's uh, broken up a bit. It's been weathered, and there's sand below the sandstone because it has fallen apart. And then there's also shale. This is silt and clay sized grains, flat layers, and very brittle. Shale is also very common in our area. Uh, if you have visited Allen Park, the, the walls next to the creek are shale and it breaks off very easily. You can just walk up and break off pieces of this and they're in very thin sheets. The second type of sedimentary rock is chemical rock. This is sedimentary rock formed from the evaporation of a solution. And some common examples are rock salt and gypsum. We've seen examples of both of those in class. And you can see in the background there, I have uh, some evaporation going on. Perhaps this is in the Salt Lake, okay, or even in the Dead Sea where this is happening, but you can see the salt evaporating out of the water. And the third category are carbonate rocks. This is a type of sedimentary rock from, from living matter that has died and been compressed. Some common examples are coal, limestone, and chalk. Now coal is from plant material. Limestone is from the shells of animals that were once in oceans and water. And chalk is very fine. We write with chalk. We're writing with what were the remains of the shells of animals. Now I'm going to switch over to the reference tables to show you where you can find these. I'm going to be on page seven. So here I am at the top of page seven in your reference tables. Uh, we can see that this is the scheme for sedimentary rock identification. And at the top is inorganic land derived sedimentary rocks. If we look, we have columns for texture, grain size, composition, some special comments, rock name and map symbols. And down here, we also have chemically and or organically formed sedimentary rocks. So these are our classic, plastic rocks, and these are our chemical and carbonate rocks down here. And if we take a look, it's just as I described it before, our conglomerate and breccia are made of pebbles, cobbles, and or boulders embedded in sand, silt, and or clay. And conglomerate is rounded. Breccia is angular. We have our sand, and they give you the size for that. Fine to coarse sandstone. They also have siltstone in here. Okay, very fine grain. That would be the silt. And then the shale, they said, is just the clay here in the reference tables. Now, down here, we have at the top would be our chemical rocks. And they are our halite, gypsum, and dolomite, which form rock salt, rock gypsum, and dolostone. And these are crystals from chemical precipitates and evaporate. So those are our chemical ones. Now they also include limestone, which is formed from calcite, is crystalline or bioclastic. And it precipitates a biological origin or cemented shell fragments. Sometimes 
the shell fragments have completely dissolved. And so then they classify it as more of kind of a chemical rock. So that's why they say bioclastic or crystalline. And then down here, it's made of carbon, bioclastic, our bituminous coal is complex compacted plant remains. So that's where you can find this information on your reference tables. And it's all there, pretty much everything I talked about in those definitions and the examples I gave. So it's all there for you to use. So our objectives today were to explain the process of compaction and cementation which is lithification, to describe how the three types of sedimentary rock are formed, and to list and describe the major types of clastic sedimentary rock. Don't forget your five questions. So I will see you next time with our last category, which is metamorphic rock.